Today, we're going to read a book called Bon Appetit, The Delicious Life of Julia Child by Jessie Hartland. She bubbled over with effervescence, spoke as if she had marbles in her mouth, and gleefully hammed it up in front of the camera. She joined a spy mission during World War II and later moved to Paris and learned to cook. She wrote a classic French cookbook that still sells oodles of copies. She created and starred in a pioneering TV show loved by millions. How did a gangly girl from Pasadena do it? This is her story. Julia McWilliams was born in Pasadena, California in 1912. She was the oldest of three children. Pasadena is a town with orange groves, palm trees, and lovely weather year round. Julia played dangerous games on roller skates. The one in this picture is called hooking. You can see she's hooked onto a vehicle and is being pulled. Not a safe thing. The McWilliams family was wealthy. They even had their own cook. The cook served mostly meat and potatoes. Julia's mom only made dinner on cook's night off and could prepare exactly three dishes, biscuits, codfish balls, and Welsh rabbit. What the heck is Welsh rabbit? Well, it's a mix of beer, cheese, and mustard that's cooked together and served over toast. Nothing to do with buns. Julia loved to eat. She wasn't a picky eater at all. Julia's unusual height made dancing class a little awkward, but it came in handy for basketball because she was the team captain. And her favorite after school snack, a jelly donut. Not surprisingly, she had very large feet. Julia was sent to the finest private schools and got a great education, but she really didn't take school all that seriously. High school French class was a disaster, which she made up for later. After college, Julia moved to New York City to look for a job. She flunked the typing test at Newsweek magazine, but found employment at a large furniture store writing advertisements. Even though Julia liked to write, the job was kind of boring. So after a couple of years, she moved back to California. She took a job at a new West Coast fashion magazine, but wasn't interested in fashion at all. She wanted something different. World War II began. For the first time, women were asked to join the armed forces. So Julia moved to Washington, DC and tried to enlist, but she was considered too tall. But uh, there was a new government agency, the Office of Strategic Services, and Julia got a job with them. She was shipped off to an island called Ceylon, which is now called Sri Lanka. The OSS was a spy agency. Julia liked to joke that OSS stood for Oh So Secret. One of her projects was to help develop a shark repellent to keep sharks away from bombs that were placed in the water. Julia's main job was organizing classified papers. She really liked her coworkers, especially Paul Child, who was 10 years older and far more sophisticated than she was. Coincidentally, they both got transferred to China where they liked to try new restaurants together. Eventually, they returned to the United States and fell in love. Julia and Paul were thrilled when the State Department offered Paul a job at the American Embassy in Paris. He was going to be running the exhibits office. It was a perfect job for him because he already spoke French, he loved everything French, and Paris was his favorite city in the world. And Julia had never been to Europe before, so they packed up all their things in 14 suitcases and even took along the blue flash, their car, for a week long boat trip across the Atlantic Ocean. They arrived in France on a rainy day in November, 1948. On the way to Paris, they stopped for lunch in Rouen. 
the meal, the meal was an awakening meal for Julia. She later said this was the best meal she ever ate in her entire life. Julia and Paul found an apartment on the left bank of the Seine River. They called their place Rue de Lou. In his spare time, Paul liked to draw and take photos. This is Julia's cat, Minette. Their apartment came with a woman who cooked and cleaned for them. Paul and Julia didn't like her cooking though, so they let her go and Julia began to do a lot more cooking herself. Armed with a map, Julia walked all over Paris, exploring sights and sounds and tasting new temptations. She spent the first month studying French. She loved to talk and believed that nothing was more important than being able to communicate. So she worked really hard. It took her two years to speak well enough to get by and four years to be fluent. Julia still wanted a career and tried hat making, but that was not to be. So she had to think, what does she love to do? The answer is eat. So someone suggested she take some cooking classes. She liked the idea and enrolled at the famous Cordon Bleu cooking school. At first she was put into a beginner's class, but after two days, she was transferred to a professional class where they learned how to make sauces, soups, main courses, and desserts. Julia loved to go to parties, and at one, she met a French woman named Simone Beck, nicknamed Simka. Simka also loved to cook, read about food, and talk about food. Simka and her friend, Louisette, are, were trying to write a French cookbook for Americans without much success. One day, Julia read a magazine article by an American complaining about the lack of good kitchen knives in the United States. In appreciation, she sent the writer two small French knives. This was a pivotal moment because now she had a new pen pal in the United States. So she has three new friends, Simka, she has uh, Louisette, and then she has her friend Avis, who's in the United States. In 1951, Julia graduated from the Cordon Bleu. She and her friends Simca and Louisette started a cooking school of their own called École des Trois which just means the school of three hearty eaters. The classes are given in Julia's kitchen. The students are mostly American women found through the embassy. Simca and Louisette tell Julia about their cookbook project and ask Julia to help them, which she thinks is a great idea. She looks at the recipes they've already written. And Julia's advice to them is that they change the recipes because a lot of the ingredients that they use weren't sold in American supermarkets and they didn't have the same equipment. So she wanted to work to make the recipes foolproof. After four years in Paris, Paul's work took him and Julia to Marseille, a bustling port city on the Mediterranean Sea. Julia was sad to leave Paris, but glad she was still in France they found an apartment with a view of the harbor and Julia continued to work on what she called the cookery bookery. The fish market was right at Julia's door. She loved the famous Mediterranean fish stew called bouillabaisse and wanted to know how to make it. So she's still working on that cookbook, but she's getting more inspiration as she goes to new places. Paul next got transferred to Germany it was hard to pick up and move every few years, so correspondence with friends was even more important. Julia sent Avis some shallots and Avis sent Julia some authentic American ingredients so she could work out the recipes in the cookbook. At one point, Julia and Simka exchanged 60 pages of letters about whether preserved goose is essential to a French stew called a cassoulet. 60 pages of letter about preserved goose. That's a lot. When Paul's job ended, he was sent back to Washington, DC. 
and they returned to live in their house in Georgetown. Simca came to visit from France one time, and in a blizzard, she and Julia took a bus to Boston to meet with their editor. The cookbook manuscript was huge, and it still wasn't even done. So when all the editors met, they said, oh, that cookbook is too big. No one will ever buy it. So Julia and Simca got a letter from Boston that rejected their cookbook. Then Paul was transferred to Norway for two years. Julia worked on her skiing, gave some cooking lessons and learned some essential Norwegian. She also started working on fish recipes. So instead of making the cookbook shorter, she's making it even longer. Julia shipped off a new version of the cookbook. It was 750 pages and had everything from soup to nuts in it. But the publisher still thought it was too long. They didn't want to change it and they were very sad, but Julia's friend Avis had a friend who was a publisher and she said, maybe this publisher will like it. So they sent it off to Avis's friend and she loved it they decided to publish Julia's cookbook. So now it needed a title and Julia knew that getting the title of the book was very important. It had to be just right. So she asked people to help and offered a prize to the winner. And the final title was chosen, Mastering the Art of French Cooking. The book came out, the year was 1961. It was a masterpiece. That same year, Paul retired from the State Department and he and Julia moved to Boston. Julia and Simka worked hard to promote the new book. They gave demonstrations in department stores, they signed copies in bookstores, they were interviewed on the radio and on a rather new thing at the time called television. They made a demonstration television show to highlight some of the recipes in their book. And so many people love the demonstration that they offered Julia her own cooking show. She decided to call it the French chef, short and to the point. Even people who didn't like to cook watched the show and loved it. The TV show didn't pay particularly well, but it was good publicity for the cookbook. And there were some very funny things that happened. Once Julia pulled a used bundle of herbs from a stock pot and said, it looks like a dead mouse. Another time she just tossed a loaf of bread over her shoulder onto the floor because she didn't think the bread was good enough. On the suckling pig show, she carefully cleaned the pig's ears and teeth before cooking. But when it came out of the oven, she wasn't able to cut it into chops. There she is on the show cooking all kinds of things. This is actually a very famous scene where she introduces the chicken sisters. And this final scene says, has her saying, I'm Julia Child, bon appetit, because she ends each show saying that. And you'll see she's even wearing the um, patch from her cooking school on her shirt. Julia Child became famous. Her hard work brought her great success, and this allowed her and Paul to build a house in Provence in the south of France. She went on to write many more books. So she kept cooking. Most of the books she wrote were cookbooks, but she also wrote a biography. Julia Child died in 2004 at the age of 91. She wrote 10 cookbooks and one memoir about her life in France, and she taught and inspired millions of people to cook. And now the next generation is saying bon appetit. That's the story of Julia Child.